All right, so we, um, all right, thanks Hartley, are you recording? Okay, thank you. And is it on um, channel nine as well? I assume so. Yes. All right. Um, okay, thank you. All right, um, we're going to uh, go back to budget, Jim. Is that correct? Yep. All right. Madam Chair? <laughs> yes. I don't know if you want to take a vote. Uh, I, I can be here on the um, the Peach Barber Shop and then go into that, or, or I'm not going to well, matter. That is listed as 715. So can we take that earlier, Jim, or do we have to go with the posted time? No, it's not a, a legal public hearing. So that was merely for convenience. So if everybody is here, you should be fine. Um, all right. So is John here? Is John Barrett here? I see Kevin. John is not here. He's not going to be there till 7.15, like we were told. All right. Then maybe perhaps we should wait until 7.15 then. So I, I, is here. That's okay. Uh, so that's fine. I won't be able to be involved in a vote, but I'm going to do it. Okay. Sorry, Joe. That's all right. That's okay. I, I have all the faith in the world in you two. You, you do the right thing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, let's return to budget talk given the vote we just took okay Madam <coughs> so given given the vote that the board just took which is by um tentative agreements with the AFSME locals representing the clerical admin bargaining unit the supervisors bargaining unit the highway water bargaining unit and the police bargaining unit um, I've gone ahead and entered into the budget, um, which I will share now, the impact of those changes. Does everybody see a, a dancing budget? Yeah. Okay, I'll make it a little bigger before somebody asks me to. All right, so, um, what this budget reflects, which is gonna serve as the basis for the discussion going forward, is the budget that I spoke of before the executive session, which um, was balanced, but for that $632, um, that included the earlier position of the board for the implementation of the Collins Center Compensation and Classification Plan with everybody input onto the grid at a spot that um, input onto the grid at a spot that um, Ryan someone needs to mute thank you that guaranteed um, everybody a minimum of two percent can you make that bigger Jim I can't see it and I can't find it in SharePoint yep it's not in SharePoint because I couldn't share it until the board had met because it would have right. had information about different bargaining unit um, agreements. So what you have here is the, as I was saying, the original budget that we talked about with everything status quo, with the exception of the union rates that have just been um, tentatively agreed to, which are now the implementation of Collins, instead of effective on July 1st, 21, which is the fiscal year coming up, um, put into effect July 1st, 2019. And instead of it being at um, the closest but higher than spot in the compensation plan that yields at least a 2%, it's the closest to but higher than that yields at least a 3%. And then for fiscal year 20, and 20, excuse me, for 21 and 22, it's been agreed that there would be a step increase, which is a 2% step. So each of the positions that are covered by a collective bargaining agreement will have been adjusted by those two successive 
two percent steps and it will have started at the closest to but higher than guaranteed minimum of three so the impact of those decisions are carried in this budget uh, the non-union are exactly as they were in the earlier budget that I presented out uh, before we went into executive session, still at Collins minimum two. They have not been adjusted from that point, either upward to match what the union negotiated or downward um, for any other purpose of consideration. So that is yet to, yet to be discussed formally. Um, when you go down this list, you'll see um, all of those union positions increased. Okay, can you stop a minute? So um, at somewhere where there's a union position, because I want to sure. compare them to the um, spreadsheet that I have since I haven't seen this budget. Yep, and, and you, you understand you couldn't have seen this budget. I understand. I just, I just want to say that for the record for those that are listening. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't getting it in any fashion. I, I couldn't share it the board had met. So you'll note, Veronica, that a number of the positions that you did calculations for, right. that I did calculations for, are $5 off from one another. Um, some cases- It's that funky thing, whatever cases, that is. Yeah, some cases, you know, $8. Um, and what I did, just to give uh, an example, is if you take, let's see, um, we'll take the principal assessor as an example. See that I've got this keyed to the actual min 3% implementation final Collins by position. <laughs> so this is the Collins implementation schedule spreadsheet updated such that everybody has at least a minimum three. Yeah, that's close enough to what I had there. Okay. Yeah, you'll see each of them are within, you know, that that couple of bucks each way. Um, well, that's interesting. The one, okay, all right. One what? Go ahead, keep going. One of, them, one of them is exact. There are a couple um, of them that are exact. No, one of them is up, one of them is down. Yeah. Um, and a couple are exact, which yeah i don't quite get it but you lose your, you lose your mind trying to figure it, but i i tie it to the actual collins grid early rate in the formula spreadsheet that we were using so yeah and there's something at the bottom of that actually um hold on let me grab my other sheet that says if you're if if you're a salaried employee it's by 20 six weeks and 26. yeah and then you multiply by something point one yeah i don't quite get it but um but it's depends, close you know it's only on within fiscal, five bucks right the, depending on how the fiscal year ends there could be a couple of extra days of the fiscal year that have to be carried in one budget and not picked up in the next budget it it gets pretty funky so on those ones it's generally carried at uh, 52.2 or 26.1 because we're bi-weekly payroll. 26.1 if you're hourly, yeah. 26 if you're salaried. Yep. So that's that explains the up-down kind of thing. Okay. All right. So um, the things to, to be aware of in this document are, as I said, the um, there, there are no other changes. So, you know, I've had some conversations with with you Veronica about things that you know whether it's uh, you know the facilities budget or other things where you have questions and and concerns and, and may make recommendations those don't appear in this document as of yet I do have your version that we talked about this morning so I could you know pull that if you wanted to, you can do it as well um, you, not yet no we'll work off of this one because it has all the numbers for the um, yeah. union and so I didn't have every single number because I didn't know sure. highway water or police yeah. so let, let's look then at the forecast summary with um, the union tentative agreements built in well and, before you do yeah. show me land use oh, it's up. Which way am I going here? And conservation. Land use is right here. Um, okay. The grant position is still funded. Um, 
they are as they were at the last selectmen's meeting, the last time the selectmen as a group had eyes on it. Grade F step three, 35 hours and grade F step three, 15 hours. Okay, and show me the um, conservation. Conservation, similarly as it was at the last meeting. Um, okay, thank slide you. This, slide this over. Uh, grade E step three, 15, grade C step one, 20. Okay. So. Is this one live, Jim? Can we make changes in it if need be? Um, actually, this is not out in the, the OneDrive or the SharePoint, whatever we're calling it. Um, this is actually on my system because it's, it was too wonky trying to make all the changes. Um, okay. Out in the SharePoint. Um, I can put it in there if uh, you want to be able to. Well, I wanted to make them live today. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Go ahead, keep going. I'd be happy to to keep it. I can put it put it in the SharePoint, and you can make them as um, as we go. So, um, no need to scroll the rest of the way. So, as I was saying, with the union tentative agreements worked in, and everything else as it was, we are now. 30,577 out. Um, so with that, we have to figure out where we're going. Um, and um, I know a number of things were discussed at the last um, meeting of the select board that members of the finance committee were in attendance. Um, ranging from not funding certain positions that are budgeted here but not yet filled, um, discussion about cutting some money from the pavement management, uh, request of 50,000, um, and then there have been a number of discussions that uh, Veronica and I had this morning, and um, in terms of Wayne or Joe, I'm not certain what thoughts you've either given to it, but uh, this is where we sit right now. Jim. Do you want me to pop that into the SharePoint, Madam Chair? Um, pop this one, yes, please. Oh. That would be good. And um, I think the easy one, just looking at this right here, Jim, is, is the pavement management. And, and I have to say, I agree with you from your last meeting, Veronica. I mean, just to go back what this money was for, it was supposed to supplement the 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 debt exclusion and for maintenance and, and upkeep and, and catching up on some of the stuff we were back. So without the, the, the debt exclusion, the 50,000 really doesn't do a whole lot. Well, so. well, that is true. But the thing is it, what it does do is fund um, maintenance going forward. And if we are not doing that, we can do debt exclusion and get everything done. And in five or 10 years, we are in the exact same place um, because we don't have the money mm -hmm. set aside to maintain the roads. I know, but you, you made the statement last meeting that, you know, just we should just do away with the, the bylaw then. So, right. I mean, I'm just giving you that option. Fund it, that would be the next right. thing to look at. If we can't fund it next year, there's no point. I don't know who's talking, but if you could mute yourself, it would be wonderful. If you are not actively participating in the meeting, please mute yourself. Thank you. So the easy one is just to take that out, Jim. Just remove the pavement management plan. We didn't fund it last year. That Off puts it goes. 19, to the good. And there we have it. So go ahead and put that in SharePoint and we it are is. good to go. It, it my, my other question though is, is I know you discussed, you said earlier that the all non-union personnel, no raises. Um, oh wait, we don't have the 36,000 in, do we? What 36,000? The increase to yours, the police chief and the um, fire chief. Well, Madam Chair, it, it really isn't appropriate to have that discussion now, but I can tell you that if if you're believing that I'm looking for a 9% raise, I think I've made it clear to you personally, and I'll say it publicly, that 
that is not even remotely the case. I don't think that you or the police chief or the fire chief are, but what I was told by town council is that it is contractual and that if we do not provide it, we can be sued for breach of contract. And that and, was what and, I was told. Right, and, and I understand, and I, I wasn't invited to be a party to that discussion. Had I been, I would have said, <laughs> consistent with what has taken place each of the years that I have been here, I sit and I talk across the table and say, I'm not interested in, in that, even though it may be something I'm entitled to. And I'd be happy to have nothing because other people are getting nothing. Or I'd be happy to have two and a half because other people are getting two and a half. Um, all right, then we I'm can so have that inclined. discussion. I'm sorry. And we should all have that. It's just yeah. that it is contractual. And the piece, Veronica, I, the question I have is, they're not the only three non-union personnel. Oh, no, but they're the only ones whose increases are tied. Oh, I understand that, but I, you know, I don't, I, I just want to make sure that other employees are getting their just due. Um, I would agree across with the board. that. I agree with that, but we have, we have contracts that and, 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 salaries, no, no, I, uh, let and, me and finish. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. We have contracts that tie salaries to the increases given to other employees. That's the way these contracts are written. And if we do not provide them um, with those increases, we can be sued for a breach of contract. So if we are not providing those increases, then we, um, we should have something in writing. Absolutely. That, um, that I, I don't dispute that. And so that's a, a discussion that we can have if in fact people are willing to have that discussion. But my conversation with town council is given the language in these contracts, who is the subordinate to whom, who are the town um, uh, department heads, and what all contracts are tied to what other increases. And we do have that situation in town. And if we do not honor it without having something in writing, then we are in the breach of contract. And, and I guess, Madam Chair, the, the concern that I have is, I don't know where it would have come from that you believed, based on what I've presented, and what I've spoken about with you, and my history in the town, where oh, God. that I would take the position. Could everybody please mute themselves if you are not actively participating in the meeting? Sorry, Jim, go ahead. No, no, that's okay. That, you know, that I was going to, you know, hold the select board hostage to the language in the contract. Um, I, I never have. Um, I've forecasted that my intention this time uh, isn't to do so. And I provided you a copy of the Come here. document Come that we've been writing Come, with the prior right board. Here. When um, right here, could right you here. mute yourself if you are not actively participating in the meeting? Thank you. I, you know, I provided a copy of a document that um, is what was utilized to, as you suggest correctly, you know, to commit to writing that notwithstanding the contract language, the parties agree it's going to be this lesser number. Um, I, I just, I, I haven't been given the opportunity to finish that conversation and, and I, I'd be thrilled to do so. Okay, thank you. Do you see it in the SharePoint? Uh, let me look. I'm not on that system at the moment. Uh, let me reload. Um, did you put it in? I put it in the town meeting one, so um, I'm scanning it live as I sit here. Is it under F22 budget and warrant? Uh, F22 budget and warrant? Yes, it's there three minutes ago. I've got it. All right. So you, you see it in there and I don't, so that's even. No, it's on your, I can see it one minute ago. It's it's right there. FY22 budget and warrant articles, it's the non-union, right? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, you're right, this one, okay. Yes, that's it. Yep, so that puts us 19.423 to the good. And it preserves the land use coordinator and the grant. Grant writer, yes it does. Okay. And we have 19,000 to play with, so to speak. 
Okay, that's a good thing. All right, so do we need a vote on this budget? It's not quite complete. Maybe we need to wait until Friday. I think I think you need to wait till Friday for to have further discussion. All right, so that's what we do. How are we on time? We're over our time for our hearing. So, um, all right, so let's do- um, I will unshare. So thank you, Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Um, so let's go to uh, the hearing on Pete's Barbershop. So um, I don't know if Joe is still here. Uh, Wayne, you are, so Joe probably mm -hmm. can step away at 7.15. So did you get the right of entry agreement and did you have a chance to read through it, Wayne? I did, this is the same one we looked at before. I didn't look at one before. This is the only one that I've seen. I thought John had submitted one. afternoon from Adam. I hadn't seen an earlier one. I, I didn't see anything from Adam. The one you're referring to, Wayne, is the, the document that seeks to do a permanent easement, which is the town meeting. Oh, okay. Discussion. This is just for the temporary access agreement to be able to do the work. Okay. I have not seen that then. I've been swamped today. This came in this afternoon. And it looks to be pretty standard in terms of an access agreement. And this is just to use a parking spot or whatever to gain access to the back of the building. No, this is to be yeah. able to have work, uh, work vehicles. You know, not not cranes unless you know talked about in advance. You know, crane were needed to you know cut trees down or something. But you know, if they have their plumbing trucks or you know sheet rockers or something like that, they'd be able to come in through the parking lot to get to the back of the building to to stage from and to actually perform the work. Um, I am I am good with this, but the only question that I have is the one that you just brought up, Jim. Yep. Um, nowhere in there does it stay, say that I could find, maybe, you know, it's there, but I don't see it. Where does it state that heavy equipment, well, I would not want heavy equipment of any sort. You know, I don't, Plumbers, trucks, electricians, sheetrock, even though sheetrock can be sometimes a bigger truck. Uh, I guess larger trucks than your normal service vans. Can you I put a weight walk... limit on that? Pardon me? A weight limit? I, mean, I don't I'm doing have it. a it. weight limit out of, out of the top of my head. Maybe you know better than me. I don't know. But I don't want large trucks or... Um, uh, things carrying backhoes or cranes going through during town hall hours. Um, and that has more to do with the um, uh, consideration of those who work in town hall. That's all. I'm sure you want me to screen share the document. Um, if, if that is useful, I, I have read through it, but, and that's the only thing that I didn't see. Right. I wouldn't hours for your regular people, your electricians or your plumbers or your sheet rockers or your painters or, but if there were a backhoe coming in or a crane or some sort of large equipment and you guys would be better able to give the weight for that. Yeah, I, I think, I think the only thing at that. this point is the trees hanging over the town hall. I mean, that would probably take a bucket truck at the very least. And I guess what you're saying is you'd prefer not to do it in business hours. Yes, that's all, you know, and I, I would like that somehow stated in there. Um, I see that Eric's on, maybe he knows that better than me off the top of his head. But yes, I would rather those be during business, you know, come in before nine, really. How about, how, or it, after it, four. It, it's about a four hour job to take those trees down. And if it had to be a Saturday, I mean, it obviously wouldn't be my first choice because it would be expensive. But if that's what it takes, that's the, at this point, before we go to the town meeting, we're just trying to make a lease line. So if I told you I would keep it down to two vehicles a day, I could probably do that because there's not a tremendous amount of work to do that has to be done before we move these people in. Um, it's not a number of vehicles so much as it is a size of vehicle. I get it. But you said vans and, and pickup trucks would be, you know, I mean, that's what they drive, you know? Yeah, and that's okay. 
and that's it's, fine. It's uh, I would like something in here stated about larger vehicles and limiting hours. That's all. I, I think we should probably wait until probably early May too, because the ground's still pretty soft out there. Uh, yeah, the I think only, I, excuse me, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, the only concern I have is just that I, I assume that Kevin is going to want to put a dumpster back there. Exactly. Because uh, he's yes. got some interior work, and that's probably going to be a pretty decent sized truck. Um, but that's, you know, all, not only as needed. Um, and like he said, with the tree work, there may be some, some larger vehicles with that. But most of the work that he's planning is pretty much cosmetic. Right. But what you said, Adam, was is we would do that in the off hours. Like, there probably would be a dump truck, and there would probably be a chipper. Not big trees, but they got to go. They're going to cause damage, and they, they already are. Yeah. The back of the building garage. Yeah, and like I said, I think the main the main biggest truck you're going to have back there on on the free on the on a frequent basis would be you know trash. Like I said, because I know you're going to do some some interior stuff, so you're going to have a roll off back there. I yeah, say. You, I would say yeah. honestly, you'd probably see it there twice. There's not yep. a tremendous yep. amount of demo going on. We're, we're trying to work with what's there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we've been over the scope a bunch. I just just wanted to make sure that we were clear on that. Probably will be a dumpster, <laughs> and and uh, that that truck's going to be rather heavy. Uh, if, so as far as weight, it, it, those are trucks are usually heavier. So, so like a, again, I, I think I'm going to wait until like I want to put a temporary fence up between the two properties so we don't interfere with those other people's lives, and I can do stuff like that. But I don't think I'm going to hit the ground there until May because okay, I just not ready. Um, Jim, go ahead. Madam Chair, um, I know John's John's on with us, uh, Attorney. Beck. If we're looking at the document, there is Section Three, which currently reads: "Use of the license." Okay, area. Jim, does, could you screen share it then? If you're going to read from the document, if you sure. could screen share it, that would be Absolutely. useful. Yep. So, looking at. I'll zoom it. Section three right here. It currently reads, use of the licensed area by the grantee shall be in full compliance with any applicable federal, state, and or local laws, regulations, ordinances, permits, and other authorizations or approvals. I then added a comma to include limiting some descriptor of type vehicles to access outside uh, the open hours of the town hall. So something that says, whatever size vehicle that is, if we do it by, by gross vehicle weight, or if we do it by, you know, number of axles or whatever the descriptor is, just having one of the local authorizations or approvals to include such a limitation on those size vehicles to only be available um, to access after hours of town hall. Is I, that what you're I looking agree for? with that. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. So what, what for, for the smart folks on the call, what's, what goes on that blank? So I guess I would defer to Eric if he knows. Um. Um, well, like like I said, I think the biggest truck that he's going to have back there, other than the tree work, is, is going to be a, a roll-off dumpster. And they, they come in various sizes. That would really be up to uh, what size Kevin thinks he's going to get, if he's going to get a 40-yard, or if he can deal with doing smaller ones at 15-yarders. They have smaller trucks. So I just didn't want him to agree to something he can't, he can't do because he needs have that roll off you know eric um eric yes maybe then doing it by uh the inverse saying um to include um limiting vehicles other than standard trades people vans and pickup trucks to off hours Instead of trying to define yeah, I mean, a crane some language or a like that would be fine. Yeah, language like that would be fine. I mean, um, for the most part, Kevin, are you going to grind any of those stumps? Or are you going to have them pulled or are you just going to leave them? No, I mean, it's, well, it all depends what happens at the town meeting. I mean, right now I'm going to take them down and grind the stumps and just chip everything, clean it up. It's a mess. No, that's fine. I just, like I said, if you were going to, if you were going to do something besides grind them, you might need something bigger than, something big you'd need you know a back backhoe something like that uh, if you're going to grind them i think you'll be all right i think i think at this point we're just going to grind them because we don't know how far we're going to get all right sounds good yeah i mean that language is probably fine i don't I think have, 
Yeah. I have a question for you, Eric. On the town hall side, there's probably like a four foot drop from the sidewalk down to the grade. And do you think we're looking at a fence there? Um, um, like the because there's a fence there. There's a fence there now, but it's you know. Is it's that just... something that you could discuss outside of this meeting so that okay. we can move on? That would be if you could take that to Eric outside of the meeting. That would be. Yeah, we, we can we can determine that. That's that's not a. We can do that outside the meeting. It doesn't have to be okay. done here. So, so uh, purpose... I just want to get the agreement done. For the purpose of the board, then, Madam Chair, if that phrase says to include limited vehicles other than typical tradespeople vans and pickup trucks to access the property only outside of the open hours of the town hall. And if Adam is good with that, I'm good with that too. So do, do you want to take a vote of the board? Can this phrase added conditioned upon the acceptance of council and we can get it to them tonight? Um, that would be fine, yes. I'll make a motion as stated then. Um, second. Any further discussion of the board? Nope. All right. All those in favor? Wayne Miller, yes. Veronica Kelly, yes. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, Mr. Miller, thank you for your thank uh, you. help and, and work on this. Uh, and thank you to uh, Town Council. I, I know he sent over the draft uh, quite late last <laughs> night or this morning, I guess. Um, so I appreciate his efforts on it. And um, I think that works right, Kev. I mean, it, it's yeah, obviously if, on, it, on, if the on, truck with a heavy on. truck comes in, it has to be outside of, just to I clarify, guess. outside of town hall hours. We can drop off I, a dumpster. I mean, honestly, I, I, w I wanna work with you. I mean, whatever makes you more comfortable. I mean, all I'm really looking for right now is to get the job started and if you guys can do what you said and I'm pretty thrilled with that right now so town hall hours are nine to four okay um, so Friday it's closed right no 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 it is open that's, that's oh, nice try, the town hall was closed on Fridays that's nope. Athol. <laughs> no I know it is Athol but no somebody recently just told me that town hall was closed on Fridays okay my mistake Different, it, different offices vary. You have, but general hours are nine to four. Okay. Uh, okay. John, it's fair. So, yeah. all right. No, no Thank problem. You. We appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it too. If, if I might, Madam Chair, in, if you'd indulge me just because I know you're going to be talking about town meeting and I would like to participate in that. I'm just wondering when you're going to reach that discussion. Um, well, you know, just kind of mute it and listen, John. And when it comes on, then it comes on. I, I don't know. It's what seven thirty now. We have the special town meeting and ATM warrants. We have to vote the election warrants, and then we get down to the details for town meetings. So okay, okay. Um, I twenty minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, just to get things out of order here, could we take 4.3 before 4.2 and look at the election ballot? And that way for people that are on to look at that, they can um, drop off if they care to. So is that okay with you, Wayne, to go to the election ballot first to prove that? Yeah, I've already seen mine, I filled mine out. <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh. No, I mean, not, not to vote, but to, well, we have to, what do we have to do with the election warrant, Jim? Just vote to approve the election warrant as presented by the town clerk. I, I don't know if Kathy's still on. Yeah, she was who I was thinking of. She was. So, all yeah, right. She's, she's there. I see her. Okay. Well, then. I'm here. There she is. Do you have anything that you want to? um say about the election warrant or are you good if we just vote it you can just vote it. that's fine okay i make a motion we approve the election warrant as presented by the clerk uh second all those in favor we Miller, yes veronica kelly yes all right thank you thank you Um, all right, moving on to the special town meeting and the annual town meeting warrant. So Jim, do you have those ready? 
I do indeed. Uh, I'm gonna share now. So this is in the the uh, the SharePoint. So if there are any changes that need to be made as we're going through, we can make them. But I'll just go through um, each article. Article one in the special town meeting is prior year bills. We have a prior year bill of $2,340 with Media News Group. This has been a matter of some debate for a number of years. Um, there is a, a very good case that can be made that we don't owe this money. And in fact, the folks at Media News Group acknowledge that they received checks from us for these fees, but they were checks from applicants. So they did not get applied to our accounts. Be that as it may, we have tried everything short of litigation to get them to reconcile that, and they are not going to. We are now not allowed to publish anything in the Lowell Sun, Pittsburgh Sentinel, or Neshoba Valley Voice until this bill is paid. So we can spend more than that to chase them in litigation, or we can have discretion be the better part of valor, pay the bill, and begin to use them again. So that'll be for discussion at the town meeting. Okay, do we have any other bills that need to go in there? That is the only one that I have had brought to my attention. All right. So, and that would be a nine-tenths vote. Prior year bill in a special town meeting is a nine-tenths vote. So, pretty much unanimous. Next, you get to snow ice deficits. Again, this is a usual and customary article in the special town meeting warrant. As of right now, um, although I just heard we're looking at snow this Friday, apparently. Yes. Um, as of right now, it's around $87,000. Um, which is remarkably, um, low, it's much lower than it normally has been in prior years, so that's a good thing. That is the entirety of the special town meeting warrant. We then get to the annual and the, the usual customary business articles up front, uh, appointing officers, hearing from boards and committees, the James H. Tucker Fund for West Towns and Residents, um, then we get to the revolving fund articles. And again, these are usual. Uh, can you back up one on that, Jim? Indeed. Um, the James H. Tucker Fund, do we have people there now? We do. It's, a, it's an annual thing. Right. And it's, it's, it's generally been the same people unless somebody expresses an interest in no longer serving. And if that's the case, we, we seek somebody else out. They have to be a resident of West Townsend. But um, So the Cemetery and Parks Commission will be prepared with their people coming forward you have, at you the have, meeting? You have Commissioner Barrett sitting right there, but um, it, that's usually been the case. Okay, thank you. That's right. All right, so you'll have people ready to that, that, is, right? that is the most brevity I've ever heard John answer a question. <laughs> Outstanding. Two words. Um, we get to the Can you make the screen bigger uh, just a little bit, Jim? Uh, I, I'd love to if I could figure out in, here we go, in SharePoint, it, they hide things. In, yeah. Oh, it's very fuzzy, though. Thank you. Does that look fuzzy to you? Uh, a little oh. bit. It's better than the teeny, teeny numbers that you okay. can't see. So, so these revolving funds are, uh, again, annual, usual, and customary. They, um, they do what the columns say. So revolving fund for the recycling is under the authority uh, of the Board of Health for spending. The revenue source is collection of recyclables. The use of the funds, operating costs associated with recycling. And they're allowed at most to have $20,000 in that revolving fund at any given time. And then on down the list, recreation, facilities, cemetery, fire alarm, et cetera. Um, so these, uh, again, I do owe Selectman Shank um, a document to show what the current balances are in these funds. Uh, but again, these, uh, I think with the exception of one of them, they, they well predate all of us. It would be good if we could all see that, actually. Certainly, yep. All right, thank you. 
All right. Next, we get to operating budget, which um, we know that there are going to be numbers after this dollar sign. Once that is in fact finalized, which we're we're pretty close to right now, and expect that um, at a Friday meeting we should be in uh, in decent place to actually have that number added, have these functional segment numbers added, so the general government total, public safety, education, and so on, and then in this blank page we would input the entirety of the budget itself. I would look for the board's direction at that point as to whether your pleasure is to have the department with salary and expense totals and then the department total or if you would want the department all line items and totals by salary and expense. So between on Friday, think of how you'd like to see that. Um, at a minimum, if it's your wish to have the the department and the um, salary and expense lines and a total in the warrant, we would have the line by line breakout available as a handout as part of the budget book. So again, whatever you measure. Then we get to the next article, which is. Um, a retroactive salary and this is not a good number this was a, a, a plug number but this would be to see if the town would vote to appropriate from stabilization account a sum of money to pay retroactive salary adjustments for all unionized employees pursuant to the terms of the recently negotiated collective bargaining agreements between ASPE Council 93 and the town of Townsend so that number is going to be uh, larger than that when the dust settles but that was just an earlier iteration. And will that number be an estimate or an exact? Um, it, it's likely to be, depending on whether or not I can I can pester our former and in my mind still kind of town accountant to to work them to the penny. Uh, if not, it'll be as I explained to you guys earlier, looking at the salary line item for fiscal twenty for. X group and multiplying it by a percentage and coming up with the the uh, the retroactive amount that way and applying the same treatment to things like overtime in the police and education in the police. So it'll be easy to get a number that is conservative and airs on the side of being a little bit more than is necessary. Um, but obviously it'd be ideal to have it, it to the exact. But be that as it may, it's it's going to be um, probably um, another seventy-five thousand uh, dollars more than that or that's showing there when the dust settles. So next, you see uh, again usual and customary to fix the Jim, stuff. Yes, on the last article. Excuse me, Andrea. If you could direct that question to the chair, it would be welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, Veronica, where was the money to come from? I believe that, to fund that article. Stabilization accounts. So you're using non reoccurring funds to fund a recurring event? It's not a recurring event. It's a one time. The salary time. raises are incurring. Uh, the are, salary yeah. raises are funded through the budget for FY22. What will be funded here is the retroactive agreement in the um, union contracts. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, fine. Thank you. You had me scared for a second. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Andrea. <laughs> so the next article, again, usual and customary, setting the uh, salary and compensation of all elected officers in town. Um, it, it's a bit of a, an acronym to, to, that's not the right word anachronistic it's odd uh whatever the word is i was looking for there it, it's it's a it's a holdover from times gone by but um we will have voted the budget earlier which will include salaries for uh the elected town clerk uh salaries as as such they are water commissioners i believe they they take home a whopping one dollar a piece in their budget but it's you know you're, you're basically confirming those votes as you're required to in a separate article Next, you get to the water enterprise budget. Um, this is the budget as submitted by the Board of Water Commissioners. 
uh, including an amount that is deducted from that total 1,391, which shows in the article 301,120.03, and that is the portion of um, the general fund expenditures that are driven by the water department enterprise. So we pay health insurance and property and liability and things along those lines, and they get indirectly charged back to the enterprise. So that is a number that um, I'm, I'm thrilled to say in discussions with our new superintendent, he actually had almost that exact number plugged in um, just on a rough estimate before we even sat down to talk. So that is good news. Next, we have the uh, article seeking to allow the water enterprise to use excess and deficiency, their version of free cash to pay down $100,000 on a ban or a bond anticipation note for the Main Street Water Project. So until they formalize the borrowing, it's a temporary, uh, you know, it's an anticipation of doing a formal borrowing. And um, as it says in description, this is an article to pay down a temporary loan the water department has outstanding. Next, you see the water department doing something that Veronica, you and I talked about also doing on the general government side of the house, which is um, the superintendent went back and looked at prior articles that have been approved where the work is done, but there are balances remaining in the accounts and is looking to close them all out and apply them to the Main Street well replacement and upgrade project. So pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, I don't know who, who on the call or on the meeting has met uh, our water superintendent yet. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, call him up, stop up, say hello, send him an email. He's doing a really nice job. He was, he was actually out with uh, his crew power washing the Highland Street tank. Um, they were taking turns and if you drive by and look at that tank now, it looks pristine and new and it's ready for paint. So uh, it's been interesting to see him actually get right in there and do the work. Next, you get to the capital plan. Um, I gather there'll be some discussion on this, um, whether the discussion would be now, Madam Chair, or if you wanna wait until after we've gone through the entire warrant. But this is the plan as has been voted by the Capital Planning Committee uh, to put forth for fiscal 22, $933,160 in total. Um, the department, that is um, being given consideration, the item being given consideration, the impact budgetarily, and the funding source. So you'll see ambulance receipts for the ambulance lease, um, capital stabilization, such as it is for uh, two things, the replacement of some hose in the fire department and uh, a F-550 four by four one ton dump truck with plow for the highway. You'll see the tax levy is funding the vehicle leases in the police department. That is um, an amount that appears annually in their operating budget, but because they are capital items, they need to show in the plan. Uh, you then see water enterprise for a number of projects. You see Columbarium being sought by the cemetery commissioners to be funded through cemetery sale of lots fund. And the one that still has some discussion, I think, left in it is the currently voted borrow $170,000 to purchase a new loader for the highway department. And um, in an earlier version of this, there was a footnote that said, instead of 20 years, if you borrowed it at 10 years, the impact would be $21,000 per year, instead of this $12,500 for 20 years um, the thinking being that I think Veronica you and I talked today and you said the life expectancy that you've seen someplace in in literature is 15 years on a piece of equipment like this it's and not it in literature it's in the paperwork that was turned in by the highway superintendent at capital planning last year and in fact this item was on the capital plan for last year's annual town meeting the capital Plan, um, yes, life expectancy was 15 years. So there's no way I would agree to a 20-year lease sure. for uh, a something with a or payment plan. Um, we had it for, I believe it was around 39,000. 
uh, for a five-year payment plan. That was what we had put on the capital plan last year. Our option was either three years at 59 or five years at 39, I believe is how it fell out. And we went with the five years. Um, so this uh, is not a plan that I would readily agree with, even the 10-year plan. Um, I so I think this warrants more discussion and I would like to put the capital plan on the um, agenda for Friday morning. Um, so uh, I, I think that the Board of Selectmen need to discuss this and also capital, the Capital Stabilization Fund and where that's going to be because this plan, the 90,000 zeroes out capital stabilization and we are not adding anything to it, which is an issue for budgeting for the town in my book. So I think this is something that needs to be talked about by the Board of Selectmen and perhaps FinCom as well, Andrea, if you're on this call, I don't know when you're meeting again. So um, uh, that is uh, all I have to say. Would you, would you like me to see if members of the Capital Planning Committee can make themselves available to call into that as well? That would be wonderful. Yeah, I don't have a Zoom link for this meeting yet. I haven't mm -hmm. sent to TCAM. Okay. So, um, but yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, next, we get into general financial articles to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $50,000 to fund street paving pursuant to the town's pavement management plan or take any other action in relation there too. So as of the board's earlier discussion, this one is likely to disappear. Why would that be submitted by the Capital Planning Committee? Wouldn't that have been? It's not. Oh, okay. No, sorry. Yeah, that's just because I did a cut and paste from above. So. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, eliminate that. We're not doing that. Next is to see if the town will vote to reallocate $3,191.25, the balance remaining in account number, all of those numbers, from the May 1st, 2018 annual town meeting, purchase of a brush mower to fund the replacement of the access control system door locks at the highway for safety and security reasons. So the description, this is an article to reauthorize the use of unexpended balance in this account to replace the security lock at the highway garage. So this is an example of uh, the case that when town meeting says, we to meeting are gonna give you $50,000 to buy widgets, you can't, take whatever balance is left and go do something with it unless you come back to town meeting and ask permission. And that's what Jim is seeking to do here from the highway department. There's a balance of 3,191.25 left and he'd like permission to use it to replace the locks down at the highway garage. Next you see coming in from the housing authority to see if the town vote to reallocate funds originally appropriated for a feasibility study of the creation of affordable housing on Dudley Road pursuant to Article 18 of the May 7, 2019 Special Town Meeting Warrant to the completion of a housing production plan in accordance with 760 CMR 56.03 sub 4 for approval by the Commonwealth's Department of Housing and Community Development, including but not limited to engaging the assistance of professional professionals to assist with. Um, description, seeking to reuse funds that were originally used for a feasibility project to fund the housing production plan. Next, you see, to see if the town will vote um, to appropriate from PEG access receipts reserved account. Um, Madam Chair, can I have a moment, if you don't mind? I just received something that um, is emergency. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Go ahead. Can you continue or do you want me to? Beckons. Okay, so this is the um, what will be the usual and customary going off into the future article for PEG access receipts. And this is an article that's been drafted by Council for TCAM. TCAM, as um, most of us know and those that don't, is the newly created this past year um, nonprofit public access corporation. So that is the, the <laughs> nonprofit corporation that runs the PEG access, PEG meaning public, educational, and governmental. Um, so it's the, um, 
the, the folks that are doing our television, our cable television now. So uh, Jim, on this one, shouldn't we have to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of XXXX from the PEG access receipts reserved account? Didn't we talk about this last meeting? We, we did, and what we talked about is that the motion will have a number inserted in it, and we will know the day of the meeting what that number is going to be because you can only appropriate the exact amount that is in the town's custody at the time of the vote. Correct. So, so wouldn't we put something in there to indicate that there would be a dollar amount and um, then add it at the meeting when the motion is made? You, you can do that. What I chose to do, quite honestly, is input the article expressly as submitted by TCAM and their attorney. So with the exception of uh, I, at the earlier meeting that I made one change, they had written town manager. I changed it to town administrator. Correct. The rest is exactly as they submitted. And because they are their own entity, I didn't want to muck around with it. So the motion would be, as is the case with all of these, instead of saying to see if the town will, the motion is I move that the town. Correct. And a number will be input at that point in the motion. I move the town vote to appropriate the sum of whatever's in, in the account as of that day from PEG access receipts reserved. So that would be in taken care of in the motion. I, I don't think you would want me changing the motion, uh, excuse me, changing the warrant article that they submitted, right? Well, it says TCAM and Board of Selectmen and we did meet with them at the last meeting. So that's all right. Keep yeah, it the way it is, let's go. This is what we presented when we met last time. Um, so to finish the story on that, this is where money that Comcast sends to the town pursuant to the agreement that the town negotiated with Comcast um, for the purpose of funding PEG access is transferred from the town to TCAM. There is a, a separate agreement that the selectmen have in place with TCAM called a grant agreement that details how that transfer takes place, but there needs to first be this appropriation each year. Next, you see if the town will vote to raise the $5,000 annual um, contribution towards priming the pump for the town's 300th anniversary celebration coming up in 2032, which will be here sooner than you think. Next, you see the $29,500 article. It's a little higher this year than usual because a new requirement was added by the Department of Revenue. This is the Assessor's Periodic Inspections and Property Data Verification Program as mandated by Mass DOR. Next, you see, see if the town votes transfer from free cash, the sum of $55,000 to fund the, this still says second. I changed it already to third, so I'm not certain why it still says second, but it will say third of three installments of installment payment agreement executed by the Board of Selectmen and former Police Chief Richard Bailey. And as the description says, it funds the third of three installments. Next, um, you get to the general business bylaws and adoptions. The first being the scenic roads bylaw being submitted by the planning board. I don't know if. Um, um, yeah, is Chaz, Chaz on? on I'm sorry? Is Chaz on? I thought there was an adjustment to this. Yep, there, there was discussion today of the fact that this, as I understood it from talking to Beth, section G enforcement that town council has, in fact, there may be a note hiding in the margin here. Holy moly, there is. Um, yeah, that's gonna be too much for me to try to understand. Um, if you could update it at the um, the article and we can look at this again on Friday. That okay. would be good. I, obviously the planning board separately elected submitted this article uh, i i wasn't going to make that change independently and i don't know if as is on um he had he had emailed saying he was going to be on but to my understanding the planning board has not voted to do this change yet um so do you want to make the change now without that vote or do you want to hang out a little bit and wait for the vote or what, what's your well, it's Adam who made the changes, so I assume he's good with them. So I would say that if um, the planning Madam board, Chair, I'm sorry, I voted. Um, <laughs> so 
Secretary. My thought would be that planning board could make those changes and submit it to us by Friday if they need to vote on it. Do you have a vote on Monday, Chas? Um, or um, have well, you already agreed to this? The, we, we originally had agreed to this with the language that I submitted today to uh, Mr. Kreidler. Uh, we then changed it and had another vote. Um, and after talking with town council, we're changing it back to what we originally had. So we um, we were supposed to vote on it last night, but because of uh, a posting error, we're not gonna be able to meet until Friday morning uh, to officially vote on it. But I did submit the, uh, the wording to Mr. Kreidler uh, to what we'll be voting on on Friday. Okay, so I think it would be safe, Jim, if you put in the new wording in the next version of this. Excellent. And then um, uh, check in with the planning board. Uh, Chaz, separate um, question. What time on Friday are you meeting? And do you have a TCAM link? <laughs> Nine o'clock in the morning and yes. I, I can say one We are 10.30. Like. Okay, we are 10.30, so yeah. thank no, you. No, it's, it's, it's a relatively... Most of the the issues is to verify uh, is to vote on this and other outstanding business. It should be very quick. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So next, you see the um, and actually, Chaz, while you're still here, um, I I didn't want to take the liberty to to put in a description of the intention of this article. So if you want me to do that, I'd be happy to just pirate something from your language above, or if you wanted to just throw a sentence my way to put in there. Whatever your pleasure, just let me know. Um, I, I did put in a report. Um, I'm not sure if it's the one that you received, but I can resend that over to you. I can do that tonight. And then you can pick and choose what, what you want for the description. Perfect, thank you. Yep. All right, next we see dog license fees. This comes in from the town clerk. And the description down below, the attached article increased dog license fees from $6 to $8 for spayed, neutered dogs and unaltered dogs from 11 to $13. The fines for not licensing dogs should be raised from 25 to 50 per Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 141. The fines would take effect May 1st each year for those dogs not licensed. This fine does not include dogs newly acquired by town residents. So that came from the town clerk. Next, we have to see if the town will vote to accept Mass General Law Chapter 64N, Section 3, Local Option Tax at the maximum rate permitted by law. And this, under description, the state <coughs> of adult use marijuana allows municipalities to approve a 3% tax on the retail sale of marijuana by a marijuana retailer or marijuana dispensary. This would be collected with other sales taxes by the Department of Revenue and distributed to the municipality at least four times per year. To be clear, this does not mean that there is a marijuana dispensary or retailer in town. This, the discussion of the select board was, if there were ever to be one someday in the future, this would allow the town to receive 3% tax on that business. And here. Uh, yes. This is Laura Schifrin. Yes. I just have a question. I thought originally when this was discussed, that it was supposed to be the it, that the board of selectmen would have the ability to negotiate the tax. Um, this it, sets a straight tax. There's also the ability to negotiate additional tax in the uh, agreement that the town would make with the retailer, if I understand that correctly. That is correct. There's a host community agreement that can be negotiated by the Board of Selectmen with any um, cannabis business that is permitted in town. And the purpose of the host community agreement is to negotiate payment that you can argue with a straight face is directly, um, will, will cover expenses that are directly attributable to the business being in town. Um, you can so, also also negotiate for payments to certain nonprofits um, that do substance abuse work or education work. Um, but the, this warrant article for the tax is separate and apart from that. Okay, my my only point to the discussion is 
this would be a business and for it not to look like um, any business that we would not be friendly to making, to doing negotiations that would both promote business as well as be good for the town. Um, they that still have to come forward for a host community agreement. So there is still negotiation to be had. This, however, would be fixed. So, um, and you can look at it two ways. You can either say, ah, they have a tax. That means they're not business friendly. Or you can look at it and say, ah, they have a tax. They would welcome the business. They've thought about it. So there are different ways to look yeah, at it. True. And I can't anticipate how any business will look at it one way or the other. It depends, so. Okay, I just wanted to make the comment. Appreciate you allowing me to do so. Thank you, and you're welcome. Excellent. So next we have an article submitted by the North Middlesex Regional School District. This is um, being submitted to each of the three member communities to see if the town will vote to approve the establishment of a stabilization fund by the North Middlesex Regional School District commencing July 1st, 2021, pursuant to General Law 7116 G and a half. So this would um, allow the district to have a stabilization account into which they could vote to place excess funds that they have to create um, a ready day account for themselves. Um, I think this deserves some conversation as to what impact that has on the issue of excess and deficiency funds, which we we centered in our conversation on um, school budget this year, um, pretty squarely on the table in front of everybody that the continued um, certification of three, three and a half million dollars of excess and deficiency or free cash um, in, in our parlance um, indicates that there is uh, perhaps an over taking place if every year there's this extra three million dollars at the end of the day, that their budget needs are being met and there's three million left at the end of the day. So I think any discussion about creating a stabilization account should be part of the larger discussion about what the assessments are in terms of relative fairness to each of the communities and if this would in some way allow the school district to hold on to more uh, of funding that should otherwise come back to the towns at the end of the year um i guess my question is and i don't know if rob templeton is still on will there be some something uh distributed to explain this at town meeting I don't know if he's hey, yeah, I'm still yeah, I'll check into it and make make sure that somebody is um, is prepared to talk. I'm I'm currently not, but I'll make sure somebody is at town meeting. Okay, thank you. Yep. Excellent. We then get into zoning and we have the 43D article. Um, I'm not gonna read that or go into the details other than to say that this is an economic development and planning tool that cites specific properties in town and provides for expedited permitting for those sites in an effort at um, inspiring, facilitating um, development if development is to be had. Um, the town has the ability to add additional parcels to this in the future if it um, so wishes through a vote of town meeting. But as it is now, it is these sites that are listed and um, it's a good effort on the part of the planning board to have have done this, identified the parcels, and and brought this forth to the to the consideration of the town meeting. Next, we get into age restricted development, and this is a, a zoning bylaw that comes in from the planning board as well. Um, and I, I would welcome. At the end of this, it's it's a, a lengthy bylaw. A couple sentences again, Chaz, or or somebody that would be inclined to to add a description because folks will will likely go to the the, the cheat sheet, the crib note first um, to see what it's about um, instead of necessarily drowning in all of the words right out of the gate. So it would be helpful if somebody has a sentence or two they can send my way. 
Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead, Chess. Um, we have a handout that we need to approve in our meeting on Friday. In our handout, it has a report for each of the articles and bylaws that we have listed on the warrant. Excellent. If, um, if Beth has those electronically in Word that she can send along, that'll be fantastic. I'll be able to drop them right in. Yeah, we just need to vote on it, Jim. So what I can do is, <clears throat> again, I'll include that in the email that I'm putting together right now for you. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Chaz. Next week, two special legislation articles. The, um, the article that you see here is the article that came in from the Charter Review Committee at the last town meeting um, when it was to be considered. So to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the general court for the enactment of special legislation repealing and replacing the Towns and Home Rule Charter so-called adopted at the town election in 1999. And as it reads, um, the important part is after section two, the following shall be the special act charter. And then you have a bunch of blank lines. In place of those blank lines will be at the direction and discretion of the select board or the charter review committee either the entirety of the proposed new charter or a reference to where copies of such a document can be found the town website we have a lovely at, new website where we could post that <laughs> the pre prematurely launched lovely new website <laughs> so I, I would look for direction from you as to whether you want to to blow the warrant out by another it's on the list for pages or so, or if you want it referenced as to what can, can be located online and hard copies, you know, town hall, library, or something like that. It's on the list for discussion on Friday. Excellent. Okay, go ahead. And then we get to the citizen petition articles. We have. Hey, Jim, or Madam Chair. Yes. Just, Is it Rob? It's Rob. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm on the, yeah. I'm on the charter review. I, I believe that you know the new proposed charter is already on the web page it is yeah um, oh, okay. just right. as a review but there's a there's a like a final copy a track changes copy and then a, a powerpoint oh, okay. that we're yep. discussing in a meeting I think tomorrow thursday night on okay. that so all of that is on the new or old web page i'm not sure thursday night rob thursday night Oh, John, you're here. Good. Yeah, I am here. Um, yeah, the Charter Review Committee will be meeting Thursday evening at 7 p.m. via Zoom. I believe all of the necessary information to connect to that meeting is there. Um, and we'll see where we go. Okay. And after that, depending, John, it might be good if um, uh, we put added something to that news piece to say this will be article xyz on the town meeting uh for yeah. or whatever I, I i i think that after our, our meeting on thursday that would be clear as to where we go with it okay thank you madam chair um john barrett just uh, yes john. In, in terms of what's going to be presented at town meeting if the um if the full uh text of the new charter or the revised charter isn't going to be in the article itself there should at least be a handout i just want to be clear about that that there's okay. not just a reference to it's on the website because all right i would have a problem with that as moderator if we don't at least have a handout that people can refer john, to john we, we we've made a, a lot of copies i believe they are in the office of the town clerk and we can begin to make those available at any time but i would wait I would ask that we wait until after our Thursday night meeting. That's okay. good because we won't vote this until Friday anyway. So it's perfect. Good timing. Right. Thanks. John, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, through you to John, do yes. you anticipate the motion being reading the entirety of the charter? Um, Which John are you talking to? I'm talking to, to moderator Barrett. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I actually had some conversation with uh, John about this, and I, I think that we can avoid doing that as long as we have a printed out um, copy that people have a, a chance to to look at. And I will give people some time to look it over. Excellent. Hopefully, there'll be some discussion about it. But excellent. Thank you. 
So then we get to the last two articles, which are citizen petition articles. The first is to see if the town will vote to authorize the grant of an easement for right of way for the owner of 270 Main Street, Pete's Barbershop, and their employees, agents, assigns, or tenants to access the lot at 270 Main Street. Uh, through Town of Land at 272 Main Street, Memorial Hall, according to the conceptual plan here too. I have a question on, on that. Um, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sign any and all documents necessary to effectuate said grant. How, how in, a, in the warrant will attach the conceptual plan here too? Um, if I might, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead, John. Uh, since this is the article my client is uh, asking for, I think um, it might suggest the possibility of, a con according to a conceptual plan, to be supplied at town meeting, uh, because we are trying to get a, a better plan. Um, so I know sometimes there are plans that are referred to that they can't be incorporated in the in the actual warrant. Right. Uh, so I, I think that that would be okay. Uh, alternatively, uh, I could provide you with that uh, conceptual plan that I had prepared. You know, I know we've seen that before in warrants, uh, sort of as a, maybe as an appendix. Um, but I think if, if it's referred to as being passed out at, or, or distributed at the town meeting. Um, so, John, if you could get whatever language you want in there to Jim so that we can vote on it on Friday, that would be good. Okay. Here's here's the wrinkle to that though. This was submitted by petition with signatures. <laughs> so right. I, I don't know how you absent those same people or another group of, of you only need 10 for an annual, um, you know, resubmitting with changed wording because I don't you know. That, that has to be submitted by the beginning of March, doesn't it? Which, when this came in. Citizen petition, I, I think there is a... Citizen petition can only go after March on the special town meeting with 125 signature. All right, if I might, Madam Chair, that this is simply the article. The motion itself can be different. That's right. So... So we'll just do it in the form of the motion saying... Right. You know, as a handout instead of attached here too. Right. Awesome. All right, and the last article then is um, a petition due to unusual turnover in the towns and treasurer collectors and accounting offices. We respectfully request a forensic audit starting with fiscal year 2016 to the present day. The funds to pay for forensic audit will come from the town blank fund or take any action in relation thereto. And that members of the board is the entirety of the warrant. All right, so we will have a final version to vote on on Friday, correct? Yep. With the changes and, that we discussed, yep. And you will send this to Adam to just look over, please. Um, <laughs> he's, tomorrow, he's, I assume. He's already done the majority of the heavy lifting on the, the, the zoning and bylaw right. articles. The rest of the stuff he's already approved in a prior year, so it should be a real quick turnaround for him. Okay. Thank you. It would be good for him to look it over before yep. town meeting. Mm -hmm. Madam, Chair for, All right. Madam Chair for Friday, um, can I ask we just go over the ones that are changed um, that in would the interest be of time? Yeah. We like, because I, I don't I just we keep adding stuff. I don't have a whole lot of time Friday morning. I thought I was just doing the budget, but just. Well, if, wanted... if, um, well we are going to vote on the entire thing. So instead of Jim presenting, the whole thing, I guess, Jim, if you, uh, Wayne's request is for you just to present uh, or to point out to us any that have changed. And if you can put it in SharePoint on Thursday afternoon, we could all take a look at it okay. before the meeting. And would that work for you, Wayne? Yeah, I, I just I, I yeah. just don't want to go through the whole thing again as if we don't need to. Yeah. We have changed a few. We need to. Um, yeah, that's fine. Awesome. Excuse me. Are uh, you able to um, make me uh, a cup of tea? Uh, if you could mute yourself if you are not if you're uh, ordering tea, if you can mute participating, yourself. Participating, I will take a cup of tea as well. But I'll take anyway, some food. Uh, <laughs> uh, was someone asking a question though? 
couldn't and tell. Andrea was and I was going to. Okay, um, so Andrea, your question? Uh, by Friday, will you have uh, an approximate figure for the cost of the forensic audit or where it's to come from? Uh, that is a citizen petitioned article. So I am assuming that same as with the other in the motion that would be included. Am I correct on that, Jim? Just yeah, like I mean, with that's... the Pete's Barber Shop, the what we just discussed. If they're same would be true. Right. They're they're put in the warrant as submitted under signature. So that's what we've got. And the motion would would be where any clarifying language would be offered. Thank you. Well, would that mean if they didn't have a sum that the sum to fund it would be zero? I don't believe so. I'm sure that it, they will bring in whatever they're going to bring in. I can't answer that question, Andrea. Uh, no, I but I just, it. well, you could in the sense that I thought that if, if a sum doesn't appear, then how the person reading the article will be whomever submitted it. And so I would expect that that would be handled at that point. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And Madam Chair, um, it was meeting when we went over the draft warrant, I read an article about the Recreation Commission leasing space. You may recall? Yes. It, I don't know why certain things didn't get saved in this version. But I just got a frantic text message from somebody who shall not be named Emmy Huff, um, asking where is my rental article. So I just want to make certain that we recognize that that did make it in in time. It will be included in the. Warrant. I have a list, or a running yeah. list that I, and so I will add that to my running list to check on Friday. Excellent. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you. I really Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Next time, just whistle at the guilty party. All right, I'm here. <laughs> I'm hiding, but I'm here. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. All right. So, um, is that it for the? That is the warrant review. Okay. So I have a question for you, Jim. Um, the question is the annual report. We did not have one last year, yep. and this year we were going to have one with an abbreviated last year and a full this year is that in the works and it will is, that be available at town meeting it is well in the works and it is anticipated to be available at town meeting yes okay thank you um all right so anything else regarding special town meeting or annual town meeting wayne nope nope all right there's nothing to vote on yet but that will be on our agenda for Friday and I, I have a longer agenda than I expected to have for Friday, but um, that's okay. All right, um, I guess at this point, um, uh, we're moving on to the work session 5.1 town administrator updates and reports uh, details for town meeting and I did see the email that you sent from Eric earlier today. Yes. Jim, I don't know if you saw that thing, but um, it looks like there's 82 seats inside town hall. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. or is that just in the great hall? Yeah, I'm going to pull up his email. Um, actually, Eric, are you still on? I think we're all on one page now and I don't see Eric. So okay. I guess the answer is no, unless so he's what I have from, What I have from Eric is a lovely sketch, but more importantly, I have an email. Um, I'm gonna sh do you mind if I share it just so everybody can follow no, along? Go ahead and share. Go Thank ahead. you. Okay, so I've just reviewed the orders pertaining to town meeting with Rick, and Rick is Rick Metcalf from the Neshoba Associated Board of Health. They uh, are under law, the, the folks that are tasked with enforcing the regulations in the Commonwealth regarding public gatherings. So in order number 63, section six, subsection A, it specifically exempts, quote, any municipal legislative body, which town meeting is, as well as section six, sub D, polling places. Therefore, I believe only social distancing limits would apply when determining occupancy limits. 
So translation, there are limits out there that say you can only have 100 people in an indoor function. That doesn't apply to a town meeting. So the only thing that will determine our limitations will be six foot distancing. We had some discussion about that being three feet. It turns right, out that is only for schools. Okay. So right. six feet is the rule. So um, mask and six feet social distance, the great hall. 38 by 46 feet, seven, 17. Well, you don't have to read it all. Just give us the numbers, Jim. Just give us the numbers. 42 people on the floor of the Great Hall. The balcony would be 30. And if you did the Selectman's Chamber and the first floor meeting room two, you could get five in the Selectman's Chamber and six in the first floor meeting room. The uh, the, the thinking that the amount of work and having two additional moderators and going through the technology to be able to place five and six people respectively, if you fully expect you're going to be putting people outside anyway, might be better spent putting the effort towards the outside. So if you do that, uh, including using the selectmen's chambers and meeting room, you have 82 people for all rooms, including uh, not including the stage. On the stage, you would have, uh, with six foot distancing, you'd have at least the moderator, the town clerk, three select board members, myself, perhaps council. Um, so another, you know, another seven or so anyway, up on the stage, if that could be accommodated with six foot spread. So that's the story on interior capacity. So the quorum to hold the meeting is 75, unless otherwise voted by the select board with a seven day notice, um, reducing it. So you could fit 75 inside the building. You could have a meeting legally inside the building. The question is, if there are 83 people that want to attend town meeting, what does outside look like? And so that's what we had discussed, I thought last meeting so outside the sun sets at 7 48 on may 4th so um unless we get into the, the issue of light um you have people outside in chairs um in the dark if we go past obviously 7 48. i thought we were doing um six to eight that we were starting at eight. From whenever we started, we would stop at eight. Actually, the vote we took last week, I think, went to 10 o'clock. Um, Did it? I, I, I stand to be corrected, but that, that's, I think the discussion was to, to extend it out to 10 o'clock. But I thought it was eight o'clock as well. I'm sorry? Was it 10 o'clock? Mm -hmm. I thought it was eight. I thought it was eight as well. I thought we were doing six to eight on Tuesday, six to eight on Thursday. And if we needed Saturday, we would do it. Okay. And that we were putting seating in the town hall parking lot with uh, sound and perhaps a screen. Yep, I mean, the minimum is is two-way sound. Obviously, if we can get a, a large screen out there, um, all the better. Right. So um, I've, had a, I've had a lot of folks that have reached out over the last couple of weeks with concerns about having the town meeting indoors um, during the times that we're living in, even with social distancing. Um, I was asked to forward each of you a copy of an email that came in from um, former board member Sulicio. I received that just as the meeting was starting, so I don't know that you've had a chance to see it yet, but- I haven't seen any emails. I've not read I've, it yet. I haven't seen it either, and I, I do have concerns about it as well. Can, is, is there a possibility we can look at how many people can get outside the tent. I can't remember how many we were allowed to have last year at the library. I think you also have to look at what's going on at the library on that Saturday. I believe they have a, um, which it might be good for them, a fundraiser, uh, the plant sale, et cetera, is at the, at the library on that day. So I think unless you've explored that, Jim. Is that May 8th? Uh, yes, it's May 8th. Yeah, they have the plant sale um, at 
on the library side. I think you guys had it the town meeting at the senior center side last time. We did. So it would just be um, cars coming in and out um, might be the issue. It is from eight in the morning until two o'clock, but usually they sell out sometime around noon. Okay, so well, we had planned for what we talked about last time for May um, 4th and 6th was to go as long as we could in the evening. Um, and if the weather was bad, to move it to um, the next day. So we have three days planned. Um, and uh, as far as the inside goes, um, I think that by May 4th, we'll have a lot more people with at least one shot as far as vaccination goes. And if we're masked and socially distanced, um, you know, I, I think it will be okay. I wouldn't want to hold a four hour meeting, I guess is what it comes down to, so. Madam Chair, if there are voters that want to attend, but that are not comfortable attending because of COVID and that, that's why we have outside seating as well. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, John. If, if I could, uh, you know, I didn't realize how limited uh, the town hall was going to be in terms of its capacity with, uh, based on what uh, Eric has demonstrated here. And I, I think it's gonna be feasible and certainly it's going to be very difficult to manage if we have, uh, you know, a meeting that's being in place with moderators and and three different four different rooms and outside it's going to, it's going to be a fiasco okay so uh, my question then becomes how many people can we fit in the senior center parking lot because we had that same sort of question last year well at least there you have one venue and i don't know what the number is but certainly i think people are less apprehensive about meeting outdoors uh, than in a closed uh, facility. Uh, well, my I'll recollection put is on, put it on for discussion. On, um, I thought we voted on this as well last week to have town meeting on the um, fifth, sixth, and eighth. Yeah. Well, yeah, with we all did. due respect, I think you you have the prerogative until you actually, you know, file the warrant. Um, you have the ability to change that, regardless you, of what John. you voted before. I um, think in light of this new information, ma'am, Madam Chair, if you would allow me to finish my thought. Go ahead. I, I think that if you consider this new information from Mr. Chatron, it, it doesn't make sense to try to string out the town meeting over three days and under those circumstances. I realize there are issues with, uh, I'm not sure if, if the, if uh, Stacy was suggesting that there would be a problem because of the plant sale or if there is one and, and maybe then if there is, we have to pick a different date, but I think the town uh, that Selectman can do that. Um, it, I don't think it'll be a problem. I think we just have to make a plan. <laughs> so we, we can add further discussion to our um, Friday morning meeting. Thank you. All right. I, I may not be able to attend that meeting, but if I can, I will. Okay, great. All right, so um, are we at, am I frozen? Nope. Nope, all right, so um, that's the information we needed. So thank you, Jim. All right, we're gonna go on to uh, 1.5, the public comment period. Um, I, I, um, are there any comments to be had? Madam Chair. Yes, Andrea. I, at the last meeting you discussed, um, upgrading the website and how people were to do that. Correct. How are the boards and committees that meet in the evening going to get access to the website to update their their portion of it 
Yeah, that's something that we have to look at. So we're looking at all the pages. Some boards and committees have staff members, so they're parts of departments. And those that don't have staff members, we have to look at which they are, who, you know, who has historically, uh, because some of them have pages that are way out to date. And I know the Finance Committee is one of those. It is. Yeah, and it's back to like 2018 or something as far as minutes and agendas goes. Oh, so, that, that yes, we were never asked to do that, but just the right. listing of our members is out of date. Exactly. So we have to, we've started that process of looking at the pages and seeing which ones are out of date. Um, we'll be contacting um, the chairs of any where that's the case to see who has historically been doing it. And if that person isn't um, available, uh, then we have to figure out um, where it makes sense to assign it to someone in town hall. Well, so we will do that. Might there be a training if the person who used to do it for the fight if but he's no longer with us. Right. Um, could, would there be some availability to train one of our other members to do it? I don't see why that wouldn't be possible um, if that's what the board or committee wants to do. So we just have to, um, you know, notify the um, boards and committees that we have that, um, you know, kind of discrepancy with. We don't have a particular person to do the work, which is why I kind of wanted the web person, but we're not going to get that. So that's okay. We just move on and figure out who is going to do the work. That's all. So does that answer your question? Well, yes and no, but it, it answered it, but I, I would have liked it. Yes, here's the code and the training and come in Thursday. And <laughs> we're, we're not ready for that yet, but we will be and we'll let you know. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Madam Chair, I have a comment, please. Uh, go ahead, Joan. Joan Savoy. Uh, thank you. So I had sent a letter asking that uh, the board take a vote tonight to extend the uh, fuel um, assistance heating season uh, for the CDBG grant so that our townspeople can take advantage of that from uh, the typical uh, April 30th close, closing date till the end of May. Um, okay, so what I would like you to do then is if I have the information, did, it, did you send it to the entire board? Yes, plus I sent it to Wayne Dara at, um, C at uh, COG. Okay, so I will add this to Friday's agenda and we will take a vote then. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other comments? Okay, see. Any reports from board liaisons at this point? I don't have any. Um, I will say that I attended the energy committee meeting, part of it, at least last week, not the entire thing. Um, and uh, I, I was um, excited to see that they're going to start um, exploring the energy master plan. So I guess that's all I would say um, on that. That's it. So any other, um, well, you don't have any and, and Joe isn't here. So I guess we are um, ready for adjournment. Is there a motion? I move, excuse me, um, I move that we adjourn the meeting at 8.39. Um, second. All those in favor? We know yes. Veronica Kell, yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Good night, folks.